Welcome to The Bo Show. At the recent Freedom Fest conference in Las Vegas, I had the chance to sit down briefly with actor and director John Cleese. Most of you will know Cleese from his iconic roles in the Monty Python series, which he created. You will also know him from the movie A Fish Called Wanda. Cleese was speaking to Freedom Fest about the value of creativity and the creative process. And for a conference that had many areas of focus, from free market economics to the abridgment of freedom, I found Cleese's talk to be both erudite and honest. And too often in the political sphere, we don't look at how the arts or creativity can be stifled, and that stifling can be a product of rather bad governance. Cleese has previously spoken out against wokeism and cancel culture. And within the realms of libertarianism, Cleese hopes for a world of more freedom, especially creative freedom. And that's a critically important topic as we think about how the arts have become less creative rather than more creative. And that's a bad sign. When comics have to censor themselves for fear of either offending an audience member or, worse yet, be canceled from the venue, it's a treacherous state of affairs. Even standard comedies like The Office might not be able to be made today because of their political incorrectness and their willingness to offend. But Jordan Peterson, whom I quote often on this show, has said that you have to be willing to be offended to attain any truth. Because if we go around censoring ourselves to pander to others, no one will really ever know any truth because people will be afraid to say it. In A Fish Called Wanda, the character Ken has a discernible stutter. Where have they gone? Quick, where have they gone? They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. What? Are you all right? Where have they gone? They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. What the? Are you ill? No, no, no. What? You, have, you, have you got a stutter? I, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Don't worry, don't worry. Do you know where they've gone? Uh, fine, yeah. fine. Yeah. Where? The car. The car? Hotel. The hotel? Which hotel? The car. The car? The car. The car. The car. The yeah, go on, the go on. It's, it's okay. All right, wait, 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 wait. Slowly, very slowly. Slowly. The car. The car. Really? The car. The car. No hurry. The car. Sing it. Sing the car. The car. The car. The car. If you made that movie today, you'd have all kinds of groups after you, trying to protest and cancel the film. And although I didn't get the chance to ask Mr. Cleese this question, it's possible that his Monty Python brilliance and a fish called Wanda might not be made today for fear of the offense that it could cause. But Cleese was on to something when he made this content, especially Monty Python, which could be said as a satire of British stuffiness and nobility. The life of Brian, Cleese actually said, offended pretty much everyone religious, from Catholics to Jews. For instance, think about this scene from the life of Brian. I do feel wretched that any anti-imperialist group like ours must reflect such a divergence of interest within its power base. Agreed. Francis? Yeah, I think Judith's point of view is very valid, Ray. Provided the movement never forgets that it is the unalienable right of every man or woman, or woman to rid himself or herself. Or herself. Agreed. Thank you, brother. Or sister. Or sister. Where was I? I think you finished. Oh, right. Furthermore, it is the birthright of every man or woman. Why don't you shut up about women, Stan? You're putting us off. Women have a perfect right to play a part in our movement, Reg. Why are you always on about women, Stan? I want to be one. What? I want to be a woman. From now on, I want you all to call me Loretta. What? It's my right as a man. Well, why do you want to be Loretta, Stan? I want to have babies. You want to have babies? 
It's every man's right to have babies if he wants them. But you can't have babies. Don't you oppress me. I'm not oppressing you, Stan. I'm going to wound. Where's the fetus going to just take? You're going to keep it in a box? Here, I've got an idea. Suppose you agree that he can't actually have babies, not having a womb, which is nobody's fault, not even the Romans, but that he can have the right to have babies. Good idea, Judith. We shall fight the oppressors for your right to have babies, brother. Sister, sorry. What's the point? What? What's the point of fighting for his right to have babies when he can't have babies? It is symbolic of our struggle against oppression. Symbolic of his struggle against reality. I mean, this was made in 1979, and the humor should still be the same. But that is considered over-the-top offensive now. But the issue is the exact same, and it's just as absurd. He wanted to be a woman, and thinks it's his right as a man to be a woman. The sheer absurdity of this is incredible. But simply put, comedy must be allowed to stay offensive because we laugh at the offensiveness of it. And if you ever think that comedians are punching down, well, you've never been a comedian. Because a comedian gets punched all the time by having to go out there and try new material out in front of a very skeptical crowd. It's a nightmare. The same way that a singer has to go out there and cut their chops on open mic night. Cleese wrote a book called Creativity, A Short and Cheerful Guide. And he spoke to the audience with great candor about how he was not told or thought that he was creative until he was 22 years old. He had a very traditional British upbringing, but had no inkling that he was creative at all. This is a fundamental problem in our education system, he says. Now, of course, Eastern education tries to inspire creativity quite early on. And you can tell in many Asian children who are musical prodigies. I was lucky enough to be trained in the Suzuki piano method. But then again, my grandmother sang church hymns and played the piano. And my mom was a dancer. So I guess I had a lucky bloodline. But the arts have all but dissipated in our education system. And as I've said many times on this show before, it has been replaced by more woke education. The effort is not to find out if your children can play the oboe or become the next Barishnikov, but rather we need to make sure the child understands his or her gender identity or sexual orientation, because it may not be a him or her at all. That kind of tinkering in my view, and I think probably in John Cleese's view, is not just absurd, but devastating. A parent is being told that their child might like ballet or the theater, so your little Sean might be a Shauna. But in reality, the kid might just be exploring a creative side. So in his book, Cleese says that the assumption is that creativity is just a, a rare trait, but in fact, it can be acquired. But the problem, of course, is that no one tells you that you can be creative. Now, it may be true that some of us are just more talented than others. I mean, Mozart would be a great example. But a person can still be creative, even if he is not composing Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. If you think about John Cleese's resume, especially Monty Python, he was allowed to be silly. And being silly seems to need its own permission these days. That is one of society's faults. Sasha Baron Cohen was allowed to be silly, so he came up with the characters of Ali G, Borat, and Bruno. Think about this opening scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You hear this knight coming up through the mist only to learn that his sidekick is just banging coconuts together to make the sound of a horse's clump. That's silly, but it's funny. Comedians in our modern society have to curtail their own creativity for fear that they might be canceled for one offensive joke. So when Cleese talked about the creative process, he says that you have to create a creative space because none of us do that. We are far too distracted. We 
have a number of external and internal interruptions that stop our creative flow. It's a phone call, a text, a reminder in your head, the sound of a tea kettle. These disturb us, but Cleese says it's, it's okay to be confused while you're being creative. He talked about how he wrote a script and he lost it. And when he rewrote that script from memory and later found the original script, he found that his recalled one, or the rewritten one from memory, was better than the first. So it's okay to be confused and let an idea percolate. I've often done this while writing a song or even a script for this show. I might have an idea for the theme of the song and maybe write one verse or chorus, come to a stopping block and then return to it a day later. Or in the case of a song that I wrote about George Washington's love for Martha Washington called An Unalterable Affection, I learned after writing it that the lyrics were just too outdated and clunky. And I wanted to be true to Washington's writing style, but musically it just didn't flow. So I altered it a little bit after a few drafts. Cleese says that there are no mistakes in creativity, so any idea is worth exploration. 